Yes, that's better. I just don't have any views uh, for myself, so I'm going to have to do this from memory. Um, this is a situation. I have an interface, I have a virtual function, and I want to write a test about it. So I create a test, I ask for an instance of it, I don't care where it comes from, it, as long as it works. I expect some function calls, I test it with my own test software, I'm doing taxes. I pay taxes and I verify that it works. So where does the mock come from? Can we just make it? Just don't implement the interface anywhere and just pretend that it exists somehow? So we don't want to register it because that's a lot of extra information, it's duplicating, it's bad. I don't want to make manual mock classes because I'm gonna do that in 50 places, you're gonna have a maintenance overhead, you're gonna have a nightmare, you're gonna to forget to remove functions, it's terrible. And I really don't want to use scripts to do that because then you're using a script to parse C++. I'm not sure if you've ever tried to write a C++ parser, your script is bad. So let's try just not doing that. So, yeah, we can't do that, according to C++. But if we're willing to go a little bit beside the language, then the answer is just yes. So how does an object actually look? So if you look under the hood, I have an object. It has 48 byte pointer to a v-table. That's all the way at the top. I have a bunch of members. They're in order and they are just laid out like that with padding in between. So the v-table points to the actual v-table, which is really boring because it's just an array of functions. Thing is, we don't know how long that is. But we do get member function pointers to that. And they allow us to figure out which entry it is. And the member function pointer has essentially a function pointer and the base offset, so you can go to the right virtual uh, base in case of multiple inheritance, or it has a vtable index if it's virtual. And there's a bit that says, is it virtual, then it's virtual and you have an offset, and otherwise it's a function. So given a member function pointer, I can figure out which thing I should modify in the object to actually get it to work. So let's make a mock object. This is actually not entirely according to the standard because, well, we might be casting a member function pointer to some other struts. You're not supposed to do that. Um, so if you're using tools that assume you're doing standard C++, they might do things that break this. If you're doing devirtualization and actually it's going to a mock now, then it doesn't expect that. I have tested this with all the dynamic checkers that I could find, so Visual Studio, Valgrind, many others, and everybody is fine with it. They don't even warn about it. So let's make a mock object. We uh, create a function that throws an exception because we don't know what functions are gonna end up there and the only way we can exit them reliably, especially on Windows, is by throwing an exception. We fill a large array, large enough, with just that function and then we fill an object of at least the size of the object with just function, uh, pointers to the V table. We reinterpret cast that to the right type and we say good luck with that. And then you can call any virtual function on that and it will throw the exception. That works fine. So the next step is we uh, want to have an expectation on it. So we want to have a function that actually works. So we figure out what is the function, where is it? We get the name with a little bit of macro magic. We get all the types in our arguments and we get a uh, member function pointer. We take the member function pointer, horrible cast it to uh, a struct because reinterpret cast is even forbidden so you have to make your own horrible cast to do that. Uh, then we take the virtual function offset and the object offset, find the right V table, put in a new V table, and then we try to get a function that is compatible. So we use a bit of template magic to create a new function, member function pointer of a different class. We reinterpret cast it to the right type, shove it in the right place, return a handle to the call object representing this, and then we need to tell it what to expect. So we pass in a tuple with all the arguments we want. We store the tuple, we have the tuple for the call that's actually coming in, we compare them somehow, it takes a few slides to do that, so I'm not explaining that now. And we can tell you what's fine. And all the way at the end of the test, we have to validate. And this is one place that Bjorn disagrees with me, because I really don't want to call a function. Because I have something at the top that says this is a test, and I don't want the function at the bottom call because I'm going to forget that. I'm going to omit that. I'm going to do it twice. I will mess it up. Or I could integrate it into my test framework. But then I have a test framework and a mocking framework and that's bad. I don't like that. 
Or I could do the thing that Bjorn said in the keynote never to do and just throw an exception from a destructor. So in the destructor, if there's no exception flying around, then apparently the test was successful. So we can validate everything was called and if anything wasn't, we say, hey, there's something bad. Um, so this is the one place where uncaught exception is correct to use, arguably. And if it wasn't met, then throw an exception, have everything go bad. Um, you can test everything, not violate, don't repeat yourself, have a lot of maintainable test code, it works reliable, it works cross-platform, OS X, Linux, Windows. We had it working on embedded ARM platforms with an Edison Design Group compiler even. But it would be so nice if we could just not have the undefined behavior. So SG7, not sure if anybody from SG7 is in the room, please get on it, we want this. But of course, please don't do it yourself. There's been lots of people that have done it before. Um, I wrote something for that in C++03 and up. It's called Hippomox. There's somebody else, Bjorn Fahler, who wrote something called Trumpelei. It's French. And it works in C++14, and it's way better if you can do C++14. And there's also different implementations, C++11 and others. So that's what I, what I wanted to tell you. <laughs>